No man is an island, but our culture makes islands of men. We live separately. Community is fractured or dying. We're even told to fear what's outside of our locked doors. If we want anything in life, we must pay for it. The only way to pay for it is to devote as much time as humanly possible to soul-destroying jobs. Jobs that further separate us and turn us into islands. We barely have time for our children, never mind the people in our streets or in the community at large. Or the wider world. Living in this way, there's a heck of a lot of corruption and incremental changes that can happen without us noticing. We're too busy. We're busy trying to scrape together a living. But is it living? We don't have time to grow our own food, to understand what it takes to get a balance with nature. But the system is there to offer us plastic wrapped meat, vacuum packed vegetables, and frozen goods. And while we're too busy, we're not asking questions about factory farming, depletion of soil fertility, soil erosion, stolen lands, irrigation issues, and waste. Living as islands. We rely on the system to take care of it. Well, we're busy working to pay for it. No questions get asked. We're islands that are slaves to fashion. We have a lot of insecurities. And we're told we need to look a certain way. We even have to look a certain way in order to work in a job that we hate. In order to pay for our survival. Stepping completely out of fashion is seriously frowned upon in the workplace. But... We can rely on the system to provide fashion at low costs to us. And we don't ask questions about who made it and whether they have shoes. Living as islands, we don't see any other choice. We don't have time to learn how to make clothes and we're not paid enough to source ethically. We're slaves to fashion, ideologically and economically. We can't put a roof over our heads. Islands have to pay for it. We don't know how. We have to buy everything. We have to buy all the things we need to survive. Food, clothing, shelter. Because living as islands, we've come to believe that as a species, we need a system to make it happen. An economic system. We are islands. We are helpless. We don't know how to feed ourselves. We don't know how to clothe ourselves. We don't even know how to build a shelter. Isn't it strange that cavemen knew how to do all these things, but we don't? Living as islands, we are growing ever more helpless and ever more weak. The skills that we possessed 20,000 years ago that ensured our survival, we've thrown them away. And in its place, we've created a system that makes islands out of men. And we give it the task of ensuring our survival. And as that system grew, those steering it have further increased their hold on the dominant culture. They have promised us shiny shit. They decide what level of chemicals go into our water supply. They decide who is expendable, who is collateral damage. They decide how much damage is done environmentally. They decide how best to exploit both humans in the factory line and humans who consume. They decide what you spend the majority of your time doing when you're working. Because the system creates jobs that gives you money that you hand back to that system for your very survival. Because whether you are working or whether you are spending, it's the rich guys at the top who are profiting. You, my friend, are an island. An island that is being spit-roasted for your survival. People talk about the shit hitting the fan. But how is the shit going to hit the fan exactly? I want to read an excerpt from a book called A Language Older Than Words. Isolation does strange things to a person's mind. This is true for any social creature, human or otherwise. Monkeys taken from their mothers at birth, placed alone in stainless steel chambers and deprived of contact with other animals human and subhuman alike, according to researchers. They develop irreversible mental illnesses. As one of the experts in the field, Harry Harlow, puts it, sufficiently severe and enduring social isolation reduces these animals to a social-emotional level in which the primary social responsiveness is fear. Harlow and another scientist, Stephen Suomi, wondered if they could induce psychopathology in primates by removing baby monkeys from their natural mothers and placing them in cages with cloth surrogate mothers who could become monsters. They created a cloth frame monster mother that would eject high-pressured compressed air and blow the animal's skin practically off its body. They created another that would rock so violently that the baby's head and teeth would rattle. And finally, a porcupine mother that on command would eject sharp 
brass spikes all over the ventral surface of its body. In the former cases, the baby simply clung tighter because, as the scientist reported, a frightened infant clings tightly to its mother at all costs. And in the latter case, the monkey waited until the spikes retreated, then returned to cling to what it perceived to be its mother. Harlow and Suomi finally discovered that the best monster mothers they could devise were simply the products of their own experiments, the monkeys that they had raised in isolation. These monkeys, depressed, made permanently psychopathological by artificially removing them from the social embeddedness in which they had evolved, were too fearful to interact normally with other monkeys and were incapable of normal sexual relations. Undeterred, the scientists impregnated them through the use of what they called a rape rack. When the babies were born, the mothers had no idea what to do with them. Many of the mothers ignored their infants, while others, in the words of Harlow and Suomi, were brutal or lethal. One of their favourite tricks was to crush the infant's skull with their teeth, but the really sickening behaviour patterns were that of smashing the infant's face to the floor and then rubbing it back and forth. The monster mother that's described is the system. And we are the monkeys who cling to it because it's all we know. Grown up in isolation, we're island monkeys. We are the second, third, fourth, fifth generation monkeys who have devolved towards cruelty and further isolation. So when the shit hits the fan, people will either cling to their isolated existence, to their island life. They'll be protective of it. They'll be willing to die rather than look for an alternative. And maybe some people will walk away. Maybe they'll try to heal. Try to think and see things differently. I'm being realistic here. Some people will find it impossible to admit that everything is wrong. They'll find it more painful than to stay sucking at the tit of a broken system. People don't like to look at their own failings, their own compliance, and some of the most disgusting behaviours. They don't want to believe it's possible. So, we're on a knife edge. When the shit hits the fan, society and the dominant culture will either cling desperately to that which will bring about its own inevitable destruction, quite frankly, or it will break free. For me, the shit hit the fan a long time ago. I'm already mentally breaking free and I have been for a while. And you probably have too. Millions of people are. Millions of people are learning skills, the skills that we lost. How to simply survive. An imbalance. And it's not just selfish, I will protect my island learning of skills. It's also combined with viewing humanity's connection to each other. No longer being drip-fed what to think. No longer taking for granted that this is how things should be. We're thinking for ourselves. And we're seeing that survival and evolution is only going to be found within community. Think about it. Within a community, there will be skill sets that will provide everything we need and this is what i mean about separating between your wants and your needs forget what you've been promised by your bitch mother who smacks you upside the head any chance she fucking gets fuck the system everything you need is in your community there'll be people who have natural abilities we're all good at something something probably quite meaningful to us i'd bet that if everyone had the opportunity to do the things they love not the capitalist greed things that the system taught them to love taught them to need but the things we get deeper personal satisfaction from i bet every community would find they already have a fisherman that they already have people who can sort out the plumbing or fix the roof. People who can make their own clothes. The people who bake the best cherry pie, which is far better than the shit we buy. And someone else who grows those cherries. If we only stop thinking as islands, and, and if, if we, we only saw, saw how, how we need, need each other, other and, and valued, valued each other, other, and valued ourselves, we'd be happier. And surely we'd be less fearful. And, and we'd, we'd be stronger, stronger together. together. And maybe we might even evolve a little.